All right, this will be a work in progress number two on the 1 8 scale Black Moth by Industry Mechanica. And this is basically just going through and um, cleaning up those little spots I'd mentioned in a previous video. <laughs> uh, for like the bean rifle, I mentioned um, I missed a few little spots where the uh, mold line was. So that was basically just like within this area here in the gun, standing that smooth, uh, a little bit here in the trigger area, standing that smooth and a little bit right here in this uh, site. But other than that, I think it looks pretty good. And uh, I'll touch those areas up with a primer. I'm going through and looking at the arms. Like I mentioned earlier, I've got a, um, a spot right here um, that you can see there that that, that mold, uh, mist mold is still there. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna go in here real gently with my X-Acto knife and kind of scrape that. And the primer will act as a guide. So right now I'm scraping, you can see a line where there's white and gray. That's where that mist mold is. So I'm gonna go in there and just scrape it until that all turns white there. And then I'm gonna go in with some sandpaper and clean it up. And this is this is uh, 800 grit sandpaper. It's This is much higher than I typically would use. I'm out of 400, no this is 600, I'm sorry, this is 600 grit sandpaper. I normally would use uh, 400 or like some 320 right here, but I'm out of that. So I haven't used some 600 which is a little slower because it's very fine. And it'll clog up pretty easily with this, but this is just, I, I don't have a whole lot of sanding, so I'm just gonna stick with it and and use it. Um, if I had a lot of sanding, I would, I, I need to order some more of the 400. That's like my favorite grit to use. Because you can get away with um, using 400 and just priming that and uh, you're good to go after that. I have a little detail here. I don't want to mess up this little line right here. So I'm going to scrape right along there and kind of redefine that shape. And then sandpaper, I've just folded it over so I've got a sharp corner. And we're going to try to sand that little Miss mold out as best as we can. And then also when I'm doing this, I'm going to, to go back and rescribe this line right here in the clothing because I've sanded it down. So I'm a little scribing tool. I'm just going to lightly redefine that line. Just like that. And that looks pretty good. So I kind of have a color scheme in mind. And my goal basically is to get this thing primered and the base cut on tonight. Um, I'm gonna try to knock this out, a personal project between all these other things I got going on. It's kind of the only way I can get personal stuff done is if I kind of take a little break from everything else and just try to knock something out and since I know what I want to do on this uh, the figure part should rel be relatively quick the base will take the longest because I've got to scratch build some stuff and I'll talk about the base maybe in my next video but um, it should be pretty cool okay so that's look pretty good it's a little sloppy right around this edge so that's actually a good spot that's where they put the mold line that's actually a perfect spot because it's easy to get rid of I actually use my, my knife head, my exacto trick where I just scrape it and get rid of that. I don't want to take too much off because this is where it meets the body and I don't want to create a gap. So I've been getting a lot of questions on my uh, some of my Gundam videos, like where's this model? Or, have you started this kit? Have you done this one yet? And uh, the answer is no. I've sold 90% of all my Gundam kits. I only have a few left. Um, I'm changing directions towards figures. I'm really enjoying them. Um, 
I'm learning a lot of techniques. Um, I'm really enjoying the quarter scale stuff. I've met some cool people, made some really good friends. I've networked a lot. And um, I'm scraping this again right here in the crutch of this elbow here. A, you can see the where the mold didn't line up exactly. And then that's gone. So I'm changing directions towards figures. Um, I'm just really enjoying the whole process. Uh, let's see, this looks pretty good over here. It's a little bit on the hand here. And I'm gonna take a san uh, fine sanding sponge and just lightly go over the hand. Since it's a curved surface, I don't wanna use uh, flat sandpaper. And there's enough primer on there. It should I put like two nice wet coats of primer on? I, I love the style res, man. It's awesome. They they don't they don't mark it as a filler primer, but you can use it as a light filler primer. It does a great job of filling sanding scratches. Um, I really like, and it's super smooth. I mean, look at that. And I can put I could uh, tape. So I painted this uh, a couple hours ago. Put some tape on it, and you can see that it's. It's not coming off, and it's a water, it's an acrylic based paint. It's a, it's a, it's not a solvent primer. Super, super amazing stuff. And someone's at the door. Hopefully, my son will get that because it's probably one of his friends. So, I see a little spot here where I missed earlier. Again, I spent a lot of time on cleanup. Um, I think anyone who um, wants to produce a really good looking product in the end to spend much as much time on cleanup as necessary to get it to to look good because um, if you don't any little per imperfection that you see in in the primer it's gonna just gonna show all the way through your paint job so that's looking pretty good there Pretty happy with this, I think. I'm gonna take that back. Still fighting this mist mold right here. Now it's on this, this nose kind of right here in this. And I'm following this edge right here with the, just the tip of my blade. You can see it went away. And then I just go and notice some sandpaper and kind of smooth it out. So I think that's pretty good. And the magnet's working really well. I think this is good. I'm happy with the fit. Um, since it is a switchable arm, that you're gonna have a seam line or a little bit of a gap around it. I mean, the only way to really take care of that would be to pick an arm, glue it in, and fill, this, fill the gap. Um, but I think it's okay, it's not that bad. I'm just gonna go ahead and leave it alone. So that arm looks good. I'm happy with that. This one, let's see, I see a little bit here. Again, I use the I use scraping the razor blade a lot because you can get it in really tight areas. And it's a quick way to even out an area. And then I just use sandpaper to clean up that any scrape marks that I left. So that's good. Again, this edge, I got a little sanding stick here. I can use that too. This is 400 grit, so it's pretty light. Again, you don't want to take too much off because that's where it meets the body. You don't want to create a gap, especially on these uh, switch out arms where there's already kind of a little bit of a gap that you're going to have just because it's switch out. This looks pretty good in here. Yeah, this one looks actually really good. I did a, I did a little better job on the cleanup on this one. Because I hadn't originally planned on using the switch out hand, I was just going to use this one, the one that holds the helmet. All right, that's looking good. Let's see. I'm not going to record this whole process because there's no need to. So that arm looks good. I'm happy with that. So I'll put that to the side. Got the helmet, and that looks good. Again, I just inspect everything once there's primer on it just to, to 
get a sense. This one I sanded down a little bit. I had a little bit of a bubble here on the edge. Let me see if I can sand it out. The foreigner gets put the shallow bubble on an edge. I'll just start sanding it out. And not putty it, so that took care of that, really, right there. And that's ready to prime again. Just that I'm just gonna touch up the primer. I'm not gonna reprime the whole part. This part looks good. I got a little bit of again, primer kind of sticks out anything you missed. A little bit of a seam line there I missed. Very minor. Still there a little bit. There we go. That looks good. All right, that's ready to spot prime. These pouches, I shouldn't have to do anything to. They look really good um, out of the gate. So I do see a little something here. I'm not sure what that is. Okay. <clears throat> Maybe some, some contaminant underneath the primer looked like a little bit of a fish eye. So I'm gonna sand those out and sprout prime it. The fish eyes, when you get a area on the surface and it kind of boop, does this, uh, usually it's, a, uh, it's from dirt or oil on the surface. And that's where it's like, it's kind of like Dawn dish, you know, you see the Dawn commercial where they put the dishwasher soap, dish soap into the sink and all the oil goes boop like that. It's kind of the same effect. If there's contaminant, the paint doesn't want to stick and it goes, it just kind of separates around that spot. And that's called a fish eye. Oh, I did notice there was a one bubble in here. I'm gonna have to fix this. So to do that, I gotta go in here and clean out the primer. So, uh, let's see, for that, I'm gonna use, um, I'm gonna use some Mr. Uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Dissolved Putty. This stuff's pretty good. It's basically a liquid putty. It's perfect for filling these little areas. You just gotta stir it up really good, because when you first get it, it's really, it's separated and for little areas like this is perfect you know what? I take that back I'm not gonna use that that's gonna take a little too long to dry I'm gonna use some um, got some bondo oops ah crap and there you go don't spill putty all over your part I'm gonna go wash this off real quick I'll be back Okay, so Mr. Dissolve Putty, <laughs> I had to rinse it off and it took all the primer off the part. So now I've got to reprime this part, but that's no big deal because I was going to do it anyway because I was going to fix a bubble. So uh, I'm just going to put this to the side and let it dry a little bit and uh, I'll take care of it. So yeah, I mess up all the time, guys. <laughs> all the time. What I was going to say before I spilled putty everywhere is I use my Bondo Spot Glazing Putty. This stuff right here, this is perfect for little pinholes and it dries quick. That's the dissolve putty would have worked. I just would have had to wait for it to dry a while. I don't want to wait too long. <laughs> so while that's, um, let's go and look at this other arm. I already looked at the, all the arms are good. Oh wait, earlier I was working on this arm. So I can still see a little bit of the, uh, the mold slip here. Again, it's right in this, right along this like pad and you can see <laughs> As I scrape, I get like a really defined edge right there, and that lets you know that there's a, a seam line or a mist mold or something. So it just until it's all gone. And I'm just gonna go in there with a little sanding pad, smooth it out. And it's still there a little bit. So my goal with my YouTube channel, um, you know, cause it's kind of going, going to be kind of going towards figures more. I still have some Gundams in my collection. Um, I've got a commission I'm working on. I need to get that finished up for Wonderfest and uh, the MIG bus, which is going pretty good. I've got most of the painting done on it. Um, but if people ask me to do a commission, the price is gonna be like really stupid high, like 
two to three times higher than what I normally quote. And if you really want it done, I'll do it, but it's going to be extremely <laughs> expensive. <laughs> um, it says, um, I don't, I, I enjoy doing them. There's a lot of work and I like, I'm enjoying the figures cause, um, not that they're not a lot of work, they're just fewer parts and it's mostly about, really more about painting than it is about building. And that's the part I tend to be better at, is the painting. So there's a, it's really, this area's hard to get into because it's right in the bend of the uh, the arm here. You probably can't even see it on camera, but there's right in here in the crook of the arm. I'm trying to get rid of that little, again, the mist mold. So I thought maybe it was just my uh, casting that had this issue, but the, I'm going to link a video, leave a link in the in the description, all these videos to uh, the buildup I mentioned in the first video. Um, a guy named Dennis by um, Savage Forge Minis. He uh, his kid had the exact same problem. So uh, I, they're probably the the is probably in all the kits. This isn't a big deal. I mean, it's a garage kit. It's gonna Sorry about that. My uh, phone ran out of space, and it looks like I don't have much space left after this anyway. So, anyway, I was just saying that it looks like all the kits have uh, the mist mold. And basically, real quick before my, I run out of space again, to do putty work, you need to clear out the uh, whatever bubble it is that you need to fill. And I'm going to use a little bit of this putty, and I'm going to wipe the top of it off because you get this little bit of kind of liquid. I'm gonna use my my blade. Just grab a little bit. You don't need a lot. Just gonna fill that in, and this will dry in about 10-15 minutes. So I don't need a lot. It's like that. And I had another one uh, back here. I'll show you what I do there. Again, just gonna clean it out. Wipe this blade off. Sand around it so it has something to stick to. Make sure it's clean. And a little putty. I'm going to put some in there. that dry for a little while I'll sand it and then reprime it so uh, after I do all that I'll do the the last bit of primer and then I'll throw some paint on it so as always thanks for watching it's Matt Rosick we'll catch you guys next time bye